Welcome back to Homesteading with the Zimmermans, where we work hard and play hard on our little corner of land in Iowa. My husband and I were born and raised Old Order Mennonite, or Horse and Buggy Mennonite, as some refer to them as. And although we are no longer part of that culture or community, we are intentional about passing on the old-fashioned skills of our childhood to the next generation. The star of today's video is going to be potato salad. And with this week being the first week of July, we have the 4th of July to celebrate. So we have a couple potlucks to go to and the one potluck um, requested that I bring my potato salad. So I decided to make a large batch and take it to both potlucks. So I always cook my potatoes, I always cook my potatoes in the skins for making potato salad, um, just because they taste better when they're cooked in the skins. And you could just use baked potatoes, you could bake them too, but I don't wanna turn my oven on and heat up the house today if I don't absolutely have to. So I'm just gonna cook them in the skins. And we've got a couple other things going on. We've already picked all the green beans this morning. And the kids are over there at the table, snapping the green beans. So we're gonna be making potato salad and canning green beans. And I'm not gonna go really in depth with canning my green beans because I did that video last year. Um, but I will link last year's green bean video in the description for you so that you can go and follow that if, or watch that if you need in-depth instructions on canning green beans. So I didn't actually weigh or count my potatoes, but um, I do know how many cups of potatoes I need in the end. So whatever I have too many of, I'll just put in the refrigerator. If I have too many, cooked potatoes, I'll just put them in the refrigerator and we won't have any problem using them as hash browns. So that's why I just start with a big pot of potatoes. I've also done this recipe many, many times, so I know which pot I need and how full I need to make it um, to get what I, to get the amount of shredded potatoes I need. So always cook, your, start your potatoes with cold water. Um, they cook more evenly if you start with cold water because the inside warms up slowly along with the outside of the potato. And if you start with hot water, the outside starts cooking long before the inside is even warm. And then the outside of your potato starts falling apart because it's so soft before the inside is ready. So always start with cold water so that the entire potato starts heating up evenly. So when you're cooking your potatoes for potato salad, you wanna cook them not quite as soft as you would for you know, making mashed potatoes or any other kind of potatoes. And these are about done. So we're just gonna drain the water off of them and then let them cool so we can peel them. So anytime that you're cooking potatoes for any kind of dish, be it mashed potatoes or hash browns or potato salad, you'll want to strain the water off as soon as you're done cooking the potatoes because allowing the potatoes to sit in that hot water or even to sit in a hot pot full of steam can cause the potato starch to break down and turn your potatoes into a sticky, tacky mess that resembles glue. So next we're just going to dump the potatoes onto a surface and allow them to cool and this is important that you allow them to cool where the steam can escape because like I said previously allowing them to sit in their steam can cause the starches to break down and turn your potato starch into potato glue. Okay, our lunch is done. The boys are finishing up the dishes. And my potatoes 
My potatoes are cool enough to peel. And the last batch of green beans is in the pressure canner. So our last batch of green beans is in the pressure canner. And I found this pressure canner brand new at a yard sale earlier this summer. And this one, the all American one, is the one that I've always used before now. Um, so this is my first time using this one and I've only <laughs> done one batch of green beans and I can already tell a difference. And I'm absolutely going to share that with you, but I'm going to wait until I've done a couple batches of pressure canned. Um, thanks, Hadassa. I'm gonna wait until I've used it a little longer, but um, I am actually shocked. And a lot of people come to me with the question, and I now know, I believe, how to answer them. So, but like I said, I will wait to finish forming my opinion on the difference between these two um, types of pressure canners until I've used it a little more than one time. So let me see, we've got 14. So we did 21 quarts of green beans this morning. And this is how we watch our pressure canners out here. We bring the timer. <laughs> And Hadassah will sit here and babysit my pressure canners while I go finish up the potato salad in the house. So as soon as your potatoes are cool enough to handle, you're just going to scrape all the peels off. And I know that there's lots of different ways to make potato salad. This is just the way that we think it tastes best. You don't have to cook your potatoes and leave the peels on. Everybody has their own way of making potato salad. But this is our favorite recipe and our favorite method. So when we left the Mennonite community back in 2007 and I started getting my first taste of potato salad that was not Mennonite made, I drew the conclusion that only the Mennonites like a sweeter potato salad. And for that reason, I never made potato salad to take to non-Mennonite potlucks. And it wasn't until recently that I decided to share it. And the reason I decided to start sharing my Mennonite potato salad recipe is because non-Mennonites were starting to request that I bring it to potlucks. So now we're just going to chill the potatoes so that we don't turn them to mush when it's time to shred them. So while my potatoes are cooling, I am going to chop and shred the rest of my vegetables. So I've got some carrots, some celery, and a couple onions. And I have a couple different ways I'm going to do this because for potato salad, we like our onions shredded really, really fine. So I'm using this tool to shred my onions and I'll link this in the description. And then of course, I'm using my favorite rotary, rotary shredder for the carrots. And I've got my tiny shredder on there because we also really like for our carrots to be shredded really fine. And then my celery, I'm just gonna chop with my favorite knife. And then when we shred the potatoes, we are gonna use the big shredder for the potatoes.
Okay, so now that we've got our veggies shredded, we're going to mix together the dressing for the potato salad. And I am, of course, making a very large batch of potato salad. But in the link, um, in the description, I'm going to put a link to a family size recipe for you. Now, this is my mayonnaise and salad dressing. Um, you can use all mayo or you can use all, you know, Miracle Whip salad dressing. Um, I like to use half and half. That seems to be what our family likes best. So here I've got my mayonnaise. I've got my salt. I've got my vinegar. And I've got my sugar. And then my mustard. And then, of course, we're going to mix it together very well. And this is also where you'll taste it and you'll adjust the salt and the sugar and maybe even the mustard to your liking. So now that our potatoes are completely cool, we are going to shred them. You do not want to shred your potatoes before they're chilled because they will turn into a mush. And we like to shred our potatoes for a potato salad because the flavor soaks through each shredded potato much better than when you have chunks of potato. So now that all our potatoes are shredded, we're going to add all the veggies. And then we're going to add the dressing that we whipped together. And then we're just going to mix it all together and sometimes if you have a dry potato salad I'll just mix together a little bit more dressing and add it but it usually the potatoes tend to soak up the dressing and I like to let it in the refrigerator for at least 12 to 24 hours before I serve it and that lets the flavor pool all the way through. And there is your Mennonite potato salad. Um, the printable recipe is linked in the description for you. Now for some other news around the homestead. We finally got some measurable rain. And we had just a tad under four inches of rain in about four hours the other morning this week. And the entire family rejoiced. And it felt like a holiday because we waited so long for this rain. I don't know if I'm more excited because this four inches of rain means that we will have plenty of veggies to preserve for winter or the fact that this means that our cows will have a lot of grass to graze on for the next month or so. And I'm sure you're all wanting an update on the calves. They are a little over a week old at the time of editing this. And we have decided on the names Tom and Jerry. And they are each drinking around six quarts of milk a day. They've grown so strong and aggressive towards their bottles. The boys have taken to feeding the calves outside of the gate because they have gotten knocked over one too many times when they've gotten inside the gate to feed the calves. And Norma is getting accustomed to a lot of new things. Norma is not halter trained. So we are working on that using a combination of bucket training her because she really likes her grain. So I can get the halter on her and then she will follow the bucket. So the other thing that Norma is getting used to is being milked outside of 
the barn and we like to milk outside the barn in the summer just because it's cleaner and it's not as messy and there's not as many flies and but Norma before she came to us she was always milked in a stanchion by a machine so she's a little nervous about new things but this is not my first rodeo and I know that staying consistent and showing her who is boss is what is going to win this battle for me and anytime a cow is nervous or doesn't like what you're doing, she is either going to urinate or she's going to poop. And anytime she can get you to get up and move, um, she is winning. When you can get her to move out of your way or move according to your wishes, then you are boss. So basically, I just need to stay consistent and show her who's boss and let her know that she cannot have any grain or any more grain until she's done being milked. After a bit, she usually settles in and settles down and I get a good stretch of some great milking done. Um, the other thing that she's adjusting to is having one of the kids milking her on one side and me on the other side and tonight as i was filming i was milking by myself but in the morning usually i have one of the kids on the other side one of the older kids and she really is having a hard time adjusting to that but we will stay consistent and she's a pretty headstrong cow so it takes quite a bit for her to accept that we are the boss and she needs to cooperate with us the other thing that Norma does not like is she doesn't like to be stripped out. Um, she thinks that she gets to say when I'm done milking her and this is not so. So I usually set the milk aside at this time so that we don't spill any and then I will go back and I will finish milking her. And I'll just milk the rest of the milk onto the ground because I've got enough for the calves and I don't want to risk spilling it. And at this point, I just lean against Norma to let her know exactly where I'm at and keep her from moving. And I can feel when she's about to kick and I just keep my hand there so that she can't swipe at me. And this really is not my first rodeo. What Norma doesn't know is that my very first milk cow was a little Dexter heifer that was wild off the range. And that was a real rodeo. This is nothing compared to that little black Dexter that I learned to milk on. So yes, Norma is headstrong. And I am just a little more headstrong than she is. And I'll just keep stripping her out. I'll keep milking her, keeping my hands on her teats. And I'll quit when she settles down and stands nice and still. That's when I'll say, okay, all good. I never quit when she says that she's done being milked. And then we will give Norma her grain. And looks like Romeo, our Tom Turkey, is admiring himself in the reflection of my camera lens. Uno has started bringing her babies up to the barnyard and integrating them with the rest of our flock of turkeys and chickens and ducks. And they are starting to be more comfortable to be further away from their mom. So because with this patio project, my laundry line got taken down, we ordered a new laundry line from a manufacturer in Wisconsin yes. and it arrived today just in time for tomorrow's laundry day 
and we are putting it together. So this laundry line is made of galvanized pipe and Elvin assures me that it should last as long as I am able to hang up laundry to dry. And I will have, Elvin, did you say I'll have more um, space? A little bit more. I'll have a tiny bit more line than I had with my old laundry um, line. And my previous laundry line was one that Elvin had built for me on the very first summer of our marriage. And it lasted for 23 years. It definitely was time to replace it anyway. You working hard there, Harrison? Too hard. Too hard? Hey, my girl, you come here. Yeah. Mom, guess what? No, I need nuts. There we go. Hey, now I need two more of those, mister. Oh, look, Dad's going to clamp them on there. Oh, uh, yeah. Dad, we only have 12. Oh, yes. 12? You mean 13? Yeah. Hopefully you have 13. You think? About as much as you could on the other one. Dad says there's more. Well, if I tell him, if I did my math right. Well, that's it for this week's video. Thank you all for watching and subscribing and sharing and commenting. And until next time, we will be right here doing the same thing that we always do.